It's time for another episode of The Sean Tappet Show, a podcast where I connect you with thought leaders from across the globe, dig into some of my favorite topics like personal development, marketing, spirituality, and pretty much any other shiny object that happens to catch my attention. Today, my special guest is Rick Joyner, and we are going to be discussing his and General Jerry Boykin's new book, The Principles of War. Rick, I always look forward to speaking with you. Welcome back to the show. Well, glad to be back. Good to see you again, Sean. Well, uh, Rick, I'm always curious, uh, you know, when I see a co-author or an endorsement or forward relationship that's kind of unique or out of the box, uh, you know, I, ha- I haven't met anybody who knows uh, General Boykin before. So I'd love to hear, how did you two guys get connected? You're, you're not two people I would normally pair together to work on a book. Well, uh, John Boykin and I connected a long time ago, 15 years or so. I'm not sure, but uh, I had... When I owned an air charter service, I had gotten a contract to fly the uh, Delta Force commanders, a contract with the U.S. Army. And uh, anyway, at the time, I'd never heard of Delta Force. Uh, It was very secretive with the Army. And uh, it got my interest up. So I started studying it and uh, found out a, a little bit. And then years later, when I was able to meet Jerry Boykin, who had been one of the founding members of Delta, uh, we just connected and got together and started. We started inviting him to speak to our events, and uh, it went very well. Uh, he joined our board of directors, and he's been a real leader and had a major impartation into Morningstar almost from the beginning. So, uh, you know, I believe that one of the aspects that the body of Christ is called to be that we are not is God's army. (laughs) So I've been very interested in military history, strategy, things like that. And Jerry and I started speaking together at different events. and. He would teach on the 11 principles of warfare from von Clausewitz's book on war, which are based study military strategy. He would teach on the military principles and to missions, to the church, as a really good uh, paradigm for thinking strategically developing clear objectives, and taking on what I believe is a military demeanor that God has. You know, he says in Scripture, he is a warrior. And, you know, when Egypt left, I mean, when Israel left Egypt, they uh, it says they were a great mixed multitude, which means they were a mob. And then before they get to the Red Sea, it says they were marching in martial array. It was one of the first things God did with Israel was to get them marching in martial array and developing basic military demeanor. And uh, I think it's something that is sadly missing from the body of Christ. So I've been after that for a long time. And then these uh, teachings that Jerry and I would do together we would seem always to have people come up and ask us if we'd written anything about it, if whatever, because it was so captivating. And I do think it's important. Well, Jerry and I decided to write this book together. Started over 10 years ago. We worked hard. I worked real hard. Jerry did. And then just felt like there's something missing here. There's a missing ingredient or something. Anyway, we kind of set it aside for about 10 years. And then recently felt like it's time now. We need to finish this. We need to get it out. So that's how that happened. But Jerry Boykin's one of the most unique and special warriors America's ever had. And if you know his history, he uh, he not only was a founding member and commander of Delta, he's the guy Noriega surrendered to in Panama. Uh, he was the one, it was his Delta det- detachment from Delta that got Pablo Escobar. <laughs> you know, it was uh, Jerry was a commander of Delta in the famous battle 
you know, that the movie was made about called Black Hawk Down, um, things like that. And then, you know, he went on to command all U.S. special forces. Then he uh, was the head of CIA covert ops for two years. Then he uh, helped stand up the Defense Department's intelligence, the DOD intelligence wing. So he's a man of incredible experience, incredible knowledge of the world today. And we have him speaking a lot in a lot of our conferences and all, imparting that so that the body of Christ gets a, you know, much more uh, of a perspective of what's going on in the world. So, but anyway, he's a great friend, uh, been a major help to us in building this ministry as well. Well, Rick, as I was, <laughs> yes, that, that was very helpful. Thank you. Thank you for that introduction of, of how you guys met and why uh, General Boykin has been such a critical figure uh, in the recent history of our nation. Um, I think next I'd love to get into kind of the the applications uh, of some of these strategies, because I think, you know, if I walk into the average Christian bookstore, or I, I guess maybe it might be more appropriate to say, look in the average Christian book section online, uh, I'm not going to see a book like this necessarily, or, or lots of books like this. So I uh, would love to have you just walk us through how to uh, apply some of these strategies, maybe, maybe kind of through the lens of we're, we're at such a unique time as the church, uh, looking at what's happening in our nation, and that we're kind of, as many of us, I feel like would say, we're, we're kind of walking through this sort of end time season. Uh, talk to us a little bit about uh, unity of command. That's that's an early chapter in the book. Um, through, through, through that lens, or uh, how is that important to apply for the season we're all walking through right now? Well, you know, unity of command You've got to have a clear chain of command. And there are certain protocols that you learn in the military. I was in the Navy and uh, had to learn all these. And, you know, there, uh, I think some of the best uh, com developed communications between forces anywhere on the planet. And this is crucial for military operations. But I think it's crucial for missions. You know, we've been engaged in Ukraine since that started to unfold. We're in touch with a lot of Christian ministries um, through a friend uh, to about 100 pastors there on the ground. I so appreciate the way the body of Christ has responded. Great ministries and charities have responded. But we're stepping all over each other over there in Ukraine. They are often ending up in the same place trying to meet the same needs when over here, not too far away, nobody's meeting their needs. You know, we're in such need of a communication center, uh, for example. And we're building one, by the way, uh, using basic military strategy, using basic things that we learned from the intelligence community, uh, just trying to help the body of Christ function uh, tactically and strategically much more efficiently to get the job done we're called to do. So, you know, that's one of the great applications. Uh, you've got to know who to talk to. You've got to have secure communi communications. We built a network that, or we're building one that we believe is going to be utterly secure so it's your enemy. You know, in that case, we're helping a lot of the Ukrainians. We don't want the Russian forces to be able to intercept our communication uh, and know where we're sending supplies, you know, things like that. So there's a lot to it and a lot that we've learned that I think is helping us now. But the whole body of Christ needs this. We really need to understand some of these things and uh, organizationally can offer one more application. Oh, of course. Thank you. Keep going. One of the most important to me, I, th I think almost nowhere in the earth do you find any churches fulfilling the Ephesians 4 mandate to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry. And uh, now I polled thousands of Christians in conferences and all about how many knew their ministry or their gifts for accomplishing their ministry, and inevitably it would be less than 
Now, people that go to our conferences tend to be the hungriest of the hungry Christians. And uh, I say, if you know, how well would we be doing if 5% of our body was working? And I think that's pretty much the state of the body of Christ. Well, in the military, you know, when I went in the Navy, I was going into aviation. From day one, I was on a track, you know, uh, after boot camp and everything. I knew exactly what my job was going to be. I immediately got training in that job. Everybody, as soon as they get out to the fleet, you know your place. You know where your battle station is. You know where your daily job is, where you're going to be functioning. You know how to do your job. You're given some of the best training to do your job. And that's something I think you almost never find in the body of Christ. We have some of the greatest apostolic, prophetic, evangelical leaders in history, but they're not equipping anyone to do what they do. They're not equipping the saints. Well, it goes on to say there in Ephesians 4, it's the proper functioning of each, every individual part that the body's built up by. 95% of the body of Christ doesn't even know what part they are. They don't know their job in the body of Christ. Well, in the military, that wouldn't happen. It doesn't happen. We've got to learn some of these things and apply them in the body of Christ if we're going to navigate through the times that are now upon us. Well, uh, Rick, another important theme that you go into in the book is security. Uh, I think here in, in the West, many of us have felt largely in, uh, insulated from anything we would need to wor- worry about security-wise, whether that was in our home, in our communities, our cities, uh, in our churches and ministries. And and as we've seen the last uh, three to five years, it's like we've entered into a completely different world uh, at this point in terms of you know individuals, ministries, churches. Uh, how do we need to look at security differently now, maybe in a way that we just weren't forced to consider before but now it's critical that we make it a, a primary thing we're focusing on. Well, you know, the Lord said, you know, uh, he lives by the sword, will die by the sword. Now, I don't think he said that was a bad thing. I would rather die that way than a lot of ways you can die. <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, then later he tells them, go sell your coat and buy a sword. He says, the time is coming when that's going to be. And to me, the times dictate that. Personally, you know, where it says those who do not provide for their own or members of their own household are worse than infidels. Well, we tend to think of that in food, clothing, housing. How about security? How about providing safety for your family, security for your family uh, and for your neighbors? How can we love? really love our neighbors if they're under attack and we don't come to their aid. Now, I want to be prepared to come to their aid. That's why, you know, Morningstar University, you know, our goals, we're kind of modeled after Delta Force. We see it's a small school. We're we're not, we don't want everybody to come. We want people who are going to be high impact, low maintenance. They're going to be resourceful. They're going to, we, we give them some really tough training so that they will be proactive and resourceful in any situation they're in. Even if it's a new one they know nothing about, if you're proactive, you can learn what to do. You can find out to do. Sometimes even doing the wrong thing is better than doing nothing. <laughs> and, uh, but once you're moving, you know, basic law of inertia, you cannot steer anything that's not moving. So once you get moving, maybe it's to do the wrong thing, but once you get moving, God can steer you to do the right thing. So we teach that kind of resourcefulness, proactive response to anything from a car accident to a hurricane to a a war, whatever. We want our people in there. And one of the basic military principles is that you cannot win if you do not take the initiative. They call it taking the initiative, go on offense or what. You cannot win on defense. And you'll hear if you see a lot of war movies, you see um, the generals and all taking about we're losing the initiative. That's a disaster in a battle because if you have the initiative, 
You're dictating the battle, and the enemy is having to respond to you instead of the other way around. So you're controlling what's happening, and if you lose that to the enemy, the enemy is going to be doing that to you. So you've got to retake the initiative. That's just basic. Well, that's what we teach people, initiative in any situation. Any kind of car wreck, car wreck, uh, you know, if you were in a, you know, active shooter situation, what are you going to do? And we try to have our people, right? We do this in our church. We do it everywhere. But in these times, I think we're talking to a large degree of physical ability to defend yourself, defend your neighbors, defend whatever. I I decided a long time ago, I don't want to ever be in a situation when somebody comes in and starts shooting up the place where I can't do anything about it. That would be, I could not handle that. I want to be prepared to do whatever I can. And that's what we train people to do. But we train them to do it in everything. You know, like I said, accidents, storms, whatever the need is. And these are the times we live in. But we use a lot of military training. And we've used a lot of Delta guys. We use some on missions and all. They make the best missionaries on the planet. They thrive. And things nobody else would even dream of going into, they come alive and they know how to do it. So, uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much what Morningstar has been about for a long time. Well, and Rick, you have a, another chapter on mass. And, you know, as I, as I look across uh, uh, the kind of the news, social media, cultural conversation, that landscape, uh, if you will, uh, I feel like there's a, a big mass of information and people pushing uh, in one direction, so to speak. And I, I feel like the, the culture of the world is waiting for the church believers, Christians to uh, come together as a as a mass movement or in a mass movement uh, and return kind and push back. Uh, I, I feel like we haven't done that to a very effective degree at all. Uh, talk to us a little bit about kind of that that power of mass, whether it's a mass movement or, or mass communication. Uh, j- just that principle of the power of mass pushing, moving something in a direction. Yeah, well, it's also a part of the strategy called concentration of forces, which is the most successful military strategy. It's what use, is used to win almost every battle, every engagement, where you concentrate your forces along one place on the enemy's line to create a breakthrough. If you break through the enemy's lines, he's got to retreat to keep from being surrounded. So you have the initiative, and if at all possible, you keep it from that point on. Now, let me apply it on a smaller scale and then go to the bigger mass. Right now, most of us still have about 300 things wrong with us. They really need fixing. And, uh, I think it's the enemy's strategy. You know, his strategy is told in Daniel to wear out the saints. I think it's the enemy's strategy to have us trying to fight all 300 things at one time. But Paul said, this one thing I do, where if we would concentrate on overcoming one thing and create a breakthrough there, we would find the enemy retreating across the line. We would get a victory over many other things that we did not even address directly because of one breakthrough. So that's one way that you use mass to concentrate and create a breakthrough. Uh, There are a few ministries, uh, pretty high-profile ministries, and some, uh, you know, some uh, personalities. I'll call them. that we're starting to concentrate to go after the way social media has been shutting us down. We think we found a breach in their armor. We're going after it. We don't think this is right. It's un-American, definitely anti-democratic against freedom of speech. But it's we're getting together a few. We're, we want the right people instead of a lot of people. But then there is a time when you've got to have a lot of people. You really need to mobilize everyone. Now, right now, the the body of Christ is not prone to mobilize very much. 
I really appreciate the great things that Lou Engle done, you know, did with the call and all these filling up stadiums. And those were awesome events. I think some of them, if they had happened 3,000 years ago, we'd be reading about them in the Old Testament. Can you imagine what it would read like? A million men gathered before the king's palace to humble themselves, repent of their sins, and pray. What would that, that would have been one of the main events in the Old Testament. We have many of those things like that happening now. Coming up in June, we got this men's, uh, I mean, uh, Christian or, you know, small business leaders gathering. Uh, that's being kept under wraps pretty much right now. But uh, as far as date, place, and all that, but it's going to be maybe something historic. So we're learning that, but I think we've got to do a little better. I think we're divided too much because we try to unite around too much. Israel was only required to be united around two, two things. The worship of Jehovah, do it in Jerusalem, gather in Jerusalem, do it the way he prescribed. The only other thing they were required to unite about was if one tribe is attacked, all the other tribes were required to mobilize and defend their brothers. And I think we need to do the same thing. I, I appreciate the, the unique ways that different parts of the body of Christ um, maybe have their, their church meetings. and things. There's room for that. Our God made every snowflake different. He loves diversity. He loves uniqueness. So I'm good with that. And I think in some ways, the body of Christ, it's healthy that we're like tribes like Israel was. You know, we call them denominations, but they're kind of like tribes. But we also need to know that we're one holy nation, all members of each other. And if our brothers are attacked anywhere, we should all mobilize to defend our brothers. And that is a Tennessee, when you hear the sound of the trumpet, you mass, you mobilize. And that was what created their ability to respond to threats and to take advantage when they need to conquer strongholds. Well, and the, the principles you share in the book are powerful. Uh, to throw up my favorite uh, quote that ends up in a lot of the Spider-Man movies, with great power comes great responsibility. You know, I, I could see somebody taking these principles and applying them in a positive direction, uh, applying them uh, to enact some kind of a negative direction. Uh, so us as believers, people pursuing, pushing the kingdom forward, how can understanding these principles as, as we want to learn to be strategic and just maximize what we're doing, how can these also empower us to maybe see what the enemy's doing? You know, as we see, you know, a great example would be mass, you know, using the mass impact of news and media to spread maybe what I would consider bad or false ideas. Um, how, how, how can we use it just and now that we're aware, uh, can we maybe better be positioned to see how the enemy, so to speak, is using these exact same tactics against us? How can that give us a strategic advantage? Yeah, it does, because just knowing these principles, knowing how they're being used against you, enables you to develop an effective strategy for countering them when you need to. And also, if you really know them well enough, you can use an attack by the enemy against him, his own attack. Uh, our U.S. Army General Pershing, who commanded U.S. force in World War I, was one of the most brilliant ever at that. And it was just weeks after everybody had almost conceded World War I to Germany after the Russian front had collapsed and they were able to move all their forces and they went on the spring offensive and they were pushing back the allies and everybody was just about ready to surrender to them. Pershing went on the attack. He attacked the strongest point of their line and he broke through. And weeks after we almost conceded that war to the Germans, the Kaiser's fleeing and they're surrendering. So there's, there's you know, if you have that knowledge of, of them, and I've studied uh, military history and strategy. Excuse me. <laughs> I had to throw the ball for my dogs. <laughs> but, you know, for most of my life, I started when I was 15 years old, actually. And uh, 
But, you know, guys like Jerry Boykin and we have a number of other admirals who were top guys in, in intelligence and things like that. They're members of our fellowship and all. These are incredible resources most of the body of Christ is totally unaware of. And, uh, and I think we've got to learn the principles from them. And then how do we apply them? We don't have the same kinds of weapons, but our weapons are more powerful than theirs. So why don't we start using them? Why aren't we tearing down strongholds? Well, and uh, Rick, in terms of the kind of the, the reader's journey with the book, somebody spends the time, they read all the way through, they get to that back flap. Uh, what are the first couple of things they can do to start uh, putting these principles into motion, whether that's in their own family, their church community, their city? How can they begin putting these things to use even today? Well, you know, I think once you've got a seed in your heart that, wait a minute, this is good. This is going to help me be more fruitful, more effective. You have to water the seeds. There are many other great resources, uh, you know, other books, other speakers and all that we might have in to speak to our people and, and impart this and uh, to help cast a vision for why it's important. And um, and then we've got to, I think, find the people that we're supposed to be connected with. There are divine connections that if you don't make that divine connection, you won't get promoted to your next level. You're going to stay where you are. It's like Barnabas had to go and get Paul. And then both of them get in the right place before they could, you know, be promoted to their ultimate apostolic calling. Their divine connection. We've got to be connected rightly in the body of Christ. And, you know, John went so far as to say, if we abide in the light, as he is in the light, Jesus, we will have kinania. He didn't use the word ecclesia. He said kinania which is a bonding into a family relationship stronger than any human family. We will have kinania in the blood of Jesus will cleanse us from all sin. So without that, without being connected as we're supposed to be with those we've got to be connected with, we're really not functioning as the body of Christ right now. Using these principles, they can use them in the military because they've got a force that they brought up through boot camp, through all their different infantry training. In the Navy, we had all kinds of other technical training, but we're trained and we're deployed. We know how to do our job. We know how to function together. Now we're reliant upon each other and we work together in everything. Uh, you don't see that in the body of Christ, but it has to happen. So when it does, I think these principles we're going to just see how effective Christians can use them even more so than military forces. And Rick, in terms of the listeners and viewers connecting with you and your ministry, where do we go to discover you and discover this book on the web? Well, we it's in our bookstore. It's in a lot of bookstores now, Amazon, all, of course. But uh, then go to MorningstarMinistries.org. You can type in dot and it'll still get to us. And our website, we have a bookstore on it. We have an events page where you can look up conferences, maybe where Boykin is going to be speaking here. He usually almost always does our New Year conference and such an unbelievable resource to the body of Christ. Um, but yeah, you can find out about Morningstar University, our special forces missions, um, all kinds of things that we're doing. But thank you for that. We would, we're looking for high impact, low maintenance people, people that can take care of themselves and help take care of others too. I, I love that high impact, low maintenance people. Uh, well, well, like we do with every episode, we'll make it easy. We'll have uh, links to Rick's Ministries website, as well as links to where you can pick up your very own copy of this new book. It's time to bring this episode of the Sean Tabbitt Show to a close. Many thanks for being a part of my conversation with Rick Joyner. Once again, our book today was The Principles of War. And Rick, I want to say thank you so much for sharing with us today. It's always an honor and a pleasure to have you back on the show. Well, likewise. Hopefully I'll see you soon. <laughs>